Hey y'all, welcome back to Down the Breather Hole. My name is Brian, and today we're gonna to be looking at how to convert the Twisby Swipe into an eyedropper fountain pen. So this is the first time I've ever tried to eyedropper any fountain pen. So we will see how this goes. Alrighty, so I have here my O-rings, Silicone grease, I got these from Goulet Pens. I mentioned that in my last video. If you wanna check that out and see what is coming down the line on my channel, you can do that. Anyway, I just watched Brian Goulet's video about how to eyedropper a fountain pen. And he says it's generally not necessary to use both of these, but it's a good practice because you've got a backup in case one of them fails. So I like that. I'm all about not getting ink all over the house or my clothes, or backpack, or whatever. Yeah, also, the Twisby Swipe, I had no idea when I bought this that it was eyedropper convertible, but according to Goulet's site, I was looking at the Twisby Swipe on there for some reason. I have no idea why. <laughs> it's so funny when I find myself looking at a pen online that I already have. Have you done that? I feel like I've heard other people talk about doing that. It's kind of silly, but anyway, I saw that it was eyedropper convertible. They were saying that that was a thing you could do with this. So we're going to test it and see how it goes. Now, I know I didn't get the demonstrator version, so it's not quite as ideal for an eyedropper, but because of this clear grip section and this ink window combined, um, you've got a really good, what is that? Two thirds of an inch. Uh, where ink can flow th freely and you can see it. So it's a really generous um, ink window, I guess, for the purposes of an eyedropper convertible fountain pen. So even though it would be cool to see the ink sloshing around in here, it'll still be really nice and convenient to see the ink here. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I also have some ink syringes, which I also got from Goulet Pens. I've had those for quite a long time. I got these more recently. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my Mont Blanc Mystery Black. And the reason is, um, this is actually my first ink that I ever got. Um, that's not why I'm gonna use it. But um, I got it before I did any research or really had any experience to develop a taste in ink. And so one reason I'm gonna use it is because it is very, very well behaved in pretty much every pen ever that I've used it in. But it is also absolutely not water resistant whatsoever. And that's fine. I don't expect all fountain pen inks to be water resistant, but because I mostly use my inks for journaling and creative writing and stuff, I like to know that my writing is not gonna completely vanish if it gets a little wet. So um, I tend to shy away from this ink in particular because it is so not water resistant. And also because there are just so many water resistant black inks out there. So I don't usually bother with this, even though it is a nice ink. But today, because it is a well-behaved ink, um, I think it'll give us a really good feel for how this pen will behave when we convert it to an eyedropper pen. Okay, so we've got our tiny little O-ring here. They were way smaller than I expected them to be, but that's good because hopefully they won't be super noticeable on the pen. So we're gonna put this on. Oui, that's a white pen for this tiny little O-ring. Let's see how this goes. Uh. And then you've got these little slits in the side that are kind of sharp. I hope I don't hurt this O-ring. I have others if I do, so it's not a big deal, but I have other pens that I want the eyedropper. So um, here we go. There we go. All right, let's slip it over those threads there. Get it right up to the top of that section. Oh, it doesn't want to stay. Aha, there we go. All right, cool. Huh. All right, I'm going to actually just screw this on really quick. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, that won't be weird at all. That blends in pretty well. It is noticeable, but it doesn't, it's not like glaringly ugly or anything. So that's nice to see. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna put some silicone grease along the threads here. 
And it's my understanding that you don't really need to gob it on super thick. It's just to kind of fill some of that space in between the tines, not the tines, the threading, in between the threading so that you can um, make sure ink isn't seeping through there. Wow, that is really sticky stuff. I can see why they use it for this. Um, I was wondering if you could use uh, the silicone grease that comes with Twisby pens sometimes, but um, I was just kind of assuming that that was gonna be a big fat no because it's much more liquidy. But if any of you have tried it and have had success, I would be interested to know about that. Um, yeah. All right, so let's put this silicone grease away. Okay, time for our ink syringe here. Okay, these things, if you don't have them, I recommend getting some, especially if you're doing a lot of ink samples and things. I used to just try to, you know, get every drop I could out of an ink sample without these, and it was impossible. <laughs> but now you can get. I can just get every last drop out of my ink samples and it's so nice. And sometimes they come in handy with cleaning pens and different things like that as well. You can get into a, an old cartridge or a, a converter even, and just stick this inside and squirt it out and get it nice and clean. Um, okay. I'm a little bit nervous. Is that normal? Is that a normal part of eyedrop ring pens? Okay. I don't know how much ink this pen will hold, but we will find out. Let's see, I'm just gonna fill it up to four. Yeah, about four milliliters. We'll see how, how much of that I can get inside here. Okay, um, now one trick, since this is an opaque pen, you're not really supposed to fill um, up into those threads. You're supposed to leave it below there, so I'm gonna do my best. It might be hard for you to see, but I'm gonna do my best to keep the ink below the threads in there. Okay, whoa. Maybe I can go a little further, I think. Whoa, okay, four milliliters and counting. <laughs> I think I could go further, but for the sake of this video and because I'm a little nervous, I'm gonna leave it right there. It's pretty full. I could get maybe another, I don't know, half milliliter in there, but this is already like more than double the kind of ink capacity I'm used to. So um, this will be good enough. So now let's screw this thing back on there. You can definitely feel that feel that uh, silicone grease. It's a little bit more resistant as you turn. I don't want to turn it too tight, but I also don't want to get ink everywhere. Okay, that's pretty tight. I think I'll leave it there. Okay, here we go. Whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> Is it gonna like drip everywhere? No. So far, so good. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> okay, um, it might take a second to get it writing because I just cleaned it out. So there's some water in the, the feed, but we'll work with it and see what happens. Okie dokie. Let's see, I'm actually gonna just Okay, so it actually started writing really quickly. I did have to get some water out because it's writing kind of gray, but it's writing well. Um, no issues really at all. Um, it's very well behaved still. Um, a little bit on the wet side, but very controlled, very extra fine. My, my, I have an extra fine nib and it's still writing like that. I always wonder like, 
with all of that ink putting pressure on the feed, is it gonna just kind of gush out a little bit more? But no, at least not for this pen. So that is really cool and interesting. So I think what I'll do now, even though we're not really testing the way this pen writes or testing the way an ink looks or whatever, I still would like to write a quote for you guys. I like doing that. So here we go. to you and then I'm going to give you a little bit of context too far there we go boil the words you already know down to their bones and usually you will find the ancient sitting there at the bottom of the pot staring back so that is a quote by Anthony Doerr it's actually one of his characters in his new novel cloud cuckoo land so um, in this scene, two prisoners of war during the Korean War are sitting around a fire. One's American and one is British, and the British one knows some Greek, and he is teaching the other one. So he's talking about how if you look at these Greek words or even just English words, words that we currently use, if you break them down to their parts and look at what those parts mean, you can kind of see how the words we have came to be the way that they were, if that makes sense. I'm, I know I'm using very official scientific uh, literary terms here, but basically if you look at a word, it's probably a word that we just take for granted and don't really think anything of it. We just know what it means. But if you look at the, the parts of the word and, the, and where they come from, that word kind of translates itself. And so a word um, that we just say suddenly becomes what to someone in ancient Greece might have been a whole phrase or, or, or something more literal or more exact than the words that we um, use and just kind of take for granted. So it's interesting how words change. And I know this quote isn't the most like motivational or whatever, but it is interesting. And I like to think about the way language works. I'm a writer, so um, I like that kind of thing. And I highly recommend this book, pretty much recommend anything by Anthony Doerr. I haven't read all of his stuff, but I've read quite a bit of it. As you can see here, his novel, All the Light We Cannot See, won the Pulitzer Prize, which is kind of a big deal. So, um, and this book is also very good and it's super fun. It's a super quick page turner kind of a book. Um, it has some historical fiction, some sci-fi, some modern day realistic fiction, and it just kind of blends it all together and really interesting, fun ways. So yeah, very cool book, very beautifully written. So yeah, that's the quote. That's the eyedropper conversion of a Twisby swipe. So I guess that's it. Let me know if you have any questions um, and I will talk to you later. Bye.